long way to use healing magic is the isekai goal. Do I agree with this? I think I might. Let's see what Brandon has to say. I think this episode of the wrong way to use healing magic might be one of the most heartbreakingly badass things I've seen. Guaranteed. It's, this show came out of nowhere with these random ass mission to like kill a bear, but then we in, ended up getting invested, emotionally invested into this bear. Like this is some Lion King shit. Like Simba is like, this isn't spoilers. Lion King has been aired for over 20 plus years, but the fact that he was crying over his dead dad, dude, why did this shit make me so sad? This season and in, in the past few seasons, but like ever, man. I find animal deaths like very emotional. More than human death. I don't know why. I feel like, okay, incredibly hot take, incredibly controversial take, but I don't like humans. I think human beings are nasty. We're evil beings. That's basically cancer on this earth. And if I saw a person, if I, if, if I had a situation, two outcomes only, right? Again, it's, it's, it's this or the other, okay? Scenario one, there's a homeless person and he's so hungry, but there's also a dog. He's really hungry. I'm probably gonna save the dog. And yeah, that's kind of fucked up, absolutely. But like a part of me, for some reason, I just feel like I need to do for the animal. So whenever I see animal death in anime or any type of show, it hits me harder than human deaths, which is, <laughs> am I fucked? Maybe I am. And that bear family, that got to me. Like when baby bear was pushing, I was like, don't Bambi me here. I was like, this is cruel. And then they turn it into such a well-animated, hand-drawn fight against a- That's right, no CGI and the voice acting from Usato was insane. Giant poisonous snake. How is this show so good? This show, the name seemed gen- I literally thought this would be a cell phone in another world isekai. The name- Was it that bad? Was cell phone in another world isekai that bad? I saw the premise and I'm like, this could be kind of interesting. I don't know, you could introduce like- I don't know if he still has like connection to the internet or something, but you have your camera, you could like video record shit. People are gonna be like, what the fuck is this technology? But was it actually that bad? It was bad? <laughs> oh no. Didn't give me confidence. The poster didn't give me confidence. Nothing about the show seemed that good. And then they give me Shield Hero with a comedy twist. Not gonna lie, the only reason I picked this show up, one of my community members told me to watch a trailer for it. And I was like, this looks fucking stupid. What is this? I click on it and I saw Rose. And at that moment, I was like, all right, I'll give it a chance. But now we're starting to see how it can get it a little more serious. This was without a doubt a 10 out of 10 episode. The best episode we've seen out of the three. No questions asked. Best episode out of the three. Yeah. Yeah. Well, absolutely. First episode was kind of just getting introduced. Second episode was kind of set up in the training. And third episode, we actually had an arc. It's like a fight, right? We, we fought the snake. It was some crazy animations going on. I'd agree. It was funny. It was yeah. different. And the yeah. action was incredible. But most importantly, they did the one thing that so many of these shows forget. And that what? is give your damn characters a pet. And our boy adopts ah. baby bear. Yeah. Little... Hey, is Sun Jin Woo gonna have like a pet? Do we get a familiar? I love these familiars, man. Funny squirrel thing was hers. So we're chilling in the pet department. Give me episode four and give me a damn season two already. Full live reaction though to this one. Check out his Patreon. Patreon. If you will like to see my full and get thoughts there over there if you're interested. I, I mean, I knew we were gonna have some fun moments because the first couple of minutes of this episode is him running away from this bear family. And I was worried, man, because I really didn't want to see that bear family die. Same. As soon as I saw the bear family, I was like, oh, they're so cute. Please don't kill them. So I think there's some kind of correlation between how I perceive something cute and how more inclined I'm to, like, not want to kill them. Like, the snake is like, all right, fuck the snake. Well, if the snake started blushing and started ooing, then I'd be like, <sighs> god fucking damn it. But basically, if the animal is cute, or if something is cute, I'm, like, less inclined to want to kill it, you know? But if it's, like, the other way around, then yeah. I, on one hand, I'm... This, this video is just fucking just giving out my true colors. Now I'm saying that I'd rather have, I'd rather feed a dog rather than a homeless person. Now I'm saying if it's not cute, you should just die. Don't cancel me. I'm glad that it wasn't him who killed the bear family because once you see, it's like, yes, okay, all these animals are going to have families, but it's like, it's different when it's just a big snake or it's a big bear that you're fighting. Once you add in the, the mama bear and you add in no. the little baby bear no. and you see them being all snuggly together, it's like, bitch, I don't want to see this. I don't want to see him kill this family. And there's a couple of times where he's like, he's looking like a freak, man. He's like, I got to go kill this bear. This is my test. This or th 
Even the bunny right here in this frame was like, bro, are you really going to kill the bears? Come on, dude. Right. And it's interesting because with the revelation that the bunny was actually a Rose kind is of familiar. Like a scout for our girl, the yeah. fact that there was a couple of times where the bunny was like very like a little worried, a little kind of like sad, like don't do this. And Which is interesting because Rose directly ordered us to kill that fucking bear. So it's like, why would Rose's familiar then be like kind of guiding us against it when he's supposed to be guiding this quest, right? And I kind of wonder... You know, was the purpose really to kill that bear or was it really just to see what type of threat he would discover? Because I don't know, man, like I feel like while he wouldn't have been punished by any means if he would have just killed one of those bears. At the same time, I think, you know, just how disappointed that rabbit was. I wonder if she would have scolded him in any way. Either I think that didn't Rose make an actual statement at the end when she saved us? Like she came down, dropped in, just fucking meteor kicked down. And then she says, holy shit. This snake is here? It shouldn't be here, right? Like, that was like a shock to her, too. Like, she didn't even realize that it, sh it should have been here. And then she was thoroughly more impressed that we were able to take out the snake despite, despite it being like a higher threat than the bear. So, I don't know, maybe a little bit of a pothole. Probably doesn't really matter that much. Either way, though, he ends up finding both Mama and Papa dead, and poor baby comes in, and I'm like, nah, bro. Like, immediately I was like, we need to Please. adopt this. I thought he was just adopting animals. He has the rabbit, we have a bear, maybe a bird would come in. I was sure. just like, okay, maybe that's his fighting style. Maybe he'd have like a little enhancements with- Bro is just a fucking summoner now. <laughs> I still think his fighting style is straight up just brute force. Like, he's healing, constantly healing. He works out trains, breaks the muscles down, instantly heals it back, becomes a jack physical monster that can also heal. I think that's pretty much the point. I don't think he's going to be like a summoner, like a, tame, like a beast tamer that just like plays the fucking flute and just has like three different animals around with his muscles and he would just have a bunch of summons that he would use and to see that fight man to see it was so good i really expected this to have quite a bit of 3d and 3d doesn't mean bad per se but a lot of times when you have something like this very untextured a bright scene doesn't blend mm. into the environment well it just would feel jarring it out of place no this and that's the thing about this show everything is so bright the colors are so bold and i think this might be one of the best animated scenes like animated animes if that makes sense this season like of all the different animes I'm watching right now, I'm not sure if this has the most fluid animation, but each scene is so bright, so vibrant. The colors are just out there. It doesn't make me feel like they went half-assed on this. This was hand-drawn, baby. They did a smart thing, the, the scales. There was a texture to the scales. If you really zoom in, you can see almost like some hexagons all throughout it. And then they had like the little kind of loops to kind of give it more of a, a detailed scale look. But wait, 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 wait. So you know this snake right here? So like you can see that there's some scales here, like a little bit. Like There's like little uh, clusters of scales here, here. I'm not sure if you can see the mouse, but you know, they kind of show it. And then the rest is like no scales. So technically a snake is supposed to have all of it like that, right? But... Because it'd be too much work, do they only put it on little locations like this, this, and this to kind of show that, hey, I mean, at least they at least did that right without doing nothing. Give it more of a, a detailed scale look, but it's a very basic color palette, very basic yeah. texture, but that's a good thing because it allowed for this giant serpent to remain hand drawn and its venomous bites and lashes and its freakouts was so good yeah like the initial okay let's stab the eye and i'm like okay well now okay you lost your spear you have your knife he goes in through the mouth and of course that thing's venomous so he has that's one of the coolest things too because i think this is one of the manliest ways to fight it's taking an attack direct on and then hitting them back for an instant death which is something that usato can do even better than most characters that would ever do this because this is like a last Thing, it's like a last stand, right? I think Stark did this against one of the girls he was fighting, you know, in the Lugnar arc, but because he can heal himself, right? He takes the hit, heals himself. It's point blank range. It's perfect for his like melee combat, right? Has to basically keep the active kind of like regeneration going so he doesn't poison himself out. Yeah, that's the green Baby going Bear on. comes in with the clutch kind of gnawing on the tail. And we get to see him enhance his muscles to the point that I thought he broke that thing's cranium. I thought, I was like, okay, he punched so hard that that thing has brain damage. And honestly, he came damn close to killing it. And that was a one, that was a one punch man scene. That this thing's so strong that- it That's right. An elite squadron wasn't able to take it out. I was a little bit confused at that point because I thought they were still talking about the bear or the snake, but I think it's a snake, right? The army would struggle to defeat it. That's Our right. entire plan was, I don't expect you to beat this big boy. I just need you to get- you know, training, you know, some real life experience, see how far you can go, and somehow you surpass me. Like, she was always going to come in and save his life, need be, as she does. She does the killing blow. But the fact that our boy 
is already close enough to being the strength yes. of an army. That's the thing. And I think that's why Rose is so impressed with us because every time she kind of shits on us in private, but whenever she's talking to someone else, for example, that night guy, right? She's like, this is going to be my right hand man. Like she has a high expectation for us. And the fact we took out the snake, I think this even further elevated her confidence in us to the point where she's like, all right, Let's go fight the demons now next episode, right? But not in the way that he feels overpowered, right? Like, we can easily see how he was getting overwhelmed with this thing. But it shows the potential and why healing magic can be so built different. Because when you hear about healing magic, like, yeah, you can constantly heal yourself. You know, you're never going to be winded because you keep your stamina up. It's just, but now seeing what he can do here, I am so excited because not only does he have a noble steed that he'll be able to ride off into battle with. Big the bear. Bear. The bear's so like rotund though. It's it's got such little paws. Like your horse is like galloping, you know, gallantly. You know, it's got long legs. It's like druk, druk, druk. but the bear here, you know, it's got stubby little feet. It's just gonna scuttle around like that. It's gonna be funny to see. To grow up to be a badass, and I'm really excited to see because I kind of feel like the the bunny and the bear are gonna be a little bit of pals, probably like rough. Oh, probably yeah. Some fun. There's gonna be some cute antics. And the bunny will probably tease the bear a lot, right? The bunny seems very mischievous. The background, but most importantly. His hatred for this woman is going to continue as she is, without a doubt, a very effective teacher. What she based But the hatred? Whenever we insult her, this is kind of like clapping back, barking back, and she likes it. When we like stand up for herself and like say, fuck you, Rose, you fucking old hag. And she's like, what did you say? And at that moment, it's like, oh no, please. But I feel like she actually likes it when we stand up for herself because she likes like a strong man that can like back himself and isn't just a coward that just like submits so willingly, right? Usually super strong dominant woman like that. Obviously there is some, you know, power dynamic where he, she kind of just shits on us and we just kind of take it. But sometimes when you talk back, she kind of takes a little bit more interest, which is I'm seeing. Basically did to this boy is the equivalent of a parent throwing their kid without lifelines into the deep end of the pool. They can only That's what birds do, by the way. Like birds, like when, when baby birds are about to learn how to fly, you think they teach them how to fly? No, they fucking, all right. Jump off, jump off. You're gonna fly, you're gonna die. That's it. They swim in the shallow, they freak out, and they learn how to swim. Hers is a little more intense because it's basically a giant drop to your death, but True. it worked. He learned how to brace his fall, so if anything in battle does something similar, he's kind of set. I just don't get how this show turned out so good because watching it, nothing about it feels boring. Nothing about First episode was, was it generic? No, the summoning was interesting and the fact that it was like a twist. There's subtle things that's a bit different from this Isekai compared to everyone, every other anime. Which, okay, for example, like when you got summoned, people are, well, sometimes it's fucking truck and we got summoned, right? It's not, a, it's not a reincarnation, we just got summoned here. And then usually the king and the church, the pope people, they're probably evil, but they're like looking out for us, which is so weird. And like the popular girl and the popular guy in this world which I would assume would want to bully us and it would turn into some kind of power fantasy revenge story that many of these isekais is. It's not like that at all. It's so wholesome. And it's just little twists like that. It's also wholesome. Vibrant colors. Interesting twist on how to use healing magic. Dommy Mommy Rose doing crazy shit that, you know, satisfy all these fucking simps that just want to lick her boots. I think this is a formula for a great anime about it feels generic or this or that but i think it's a hard sell at face value because when you look at the characters at just static images it's generic you look right at the name you look it's at like, the synopsis yeah. and you're like okay that's just the isekai number 12 of the season but it really True. isn't it's funny it has a vibe to it it has a main character that's really really likable he's funny he's different he has a bit of an anger problem but his anger problem comes from a genuine place even though his issues are all his own fault because he opened his mouth when the king was trying to keep it shut so he'd have an easy life but i mean he secretly loves this lifestyle there's no way he doesn't at this point he, he definitely is enjoying i feel like this is stockholm syndrome Right, because there's a moment where he's basically like, when he first comes into the boot camp house, he basically gets, bu not bullied, but it's like initiation hazing period, right? The boys are just being boys. And now he's kind of at a stage where he's lived there long enough. He's basically talking back and talking, you know, he he's adapted. He's, uh, he's adapted into the environment, right? But at a, at, sometimes I wonder, it's like, is he actually happy? Or did he just learn how to get used to this torture and pain to the point where now it's Stockholm Syndrome, which is when you're in a toxic environment for such a long time, you become so attached to it that even you, you try to like justify and rationalize why everything is going fine. And it's like, no, it's not. 
going aspects of it at the very least. But it's such a good show. It's so insanely well produced. Sometimes the background shots, I'm like, is that a Bob Ross painting? Like, what's going on? Why is the background art this good? Why are the characters very good. so consistent? Why are the voice actors so fun? Why is the anime... The voice acting, exactly. And the fight, too, during the punch when Usato was about to kill the snake, the voice acting there was so good. Like, everybody's talking about solo leveling and about Sung Jin Moo's voice actor, you know, crying, like, coughing up blood during the recording of episode 2, which is... Like, think about it. Do you need to say that out loud to the public? You only say that shit because it's for marketing, right? It hypes it up, right? It's, it's good marketing. People are going to hear it. Wow, this must be crazy anime, right? He's going, he's coughing up blood. But like, no one's talking about this shit, right? And maybe it is because due to the lack of marketing. But I felt like Usato's performance in episode three was very good in terms of voice acting. Animation, this good. I'm just, I just have a checklist of like, you're just hitting all my boxes and making a 10 out of 10 episode and something that is perfect for entertainment value yeah. it actually feels like it has substance in the character writing the evolution of the powers the way they're exploring things in very unorthodox ways this is such a good show and it's really funny because friday has two shows that i literally Food Eden, wrong way to use healing magic. He thought nothing of or had very low expectations the unwanted undead adventurer and healing magic I guess he doesn't watch Freedom. What's the Unwanted Undead Adventure? Should I be watching this? Both are shows. This one I wasn't even planning on watching. The Undead one, I thought I'd watch, but I thought it'd be fine. And both of these are completely different than what you expect. Unwanted Undead Adventure is a pure fantasy through and through, realistic, great writing, and doesn't follow tropes. Should we be watching this? I don't know. None of you guys have mentioned it to me. This has that hilarious nature and breaks, you know, these comedy rules that you're not really expecting, but it actually has a very interesting world. And rather than just saying it's a generic isekai of the season, you're like, oh, this is a really fascinating world with a great group of characters that are going to make you laugh, feel badass, but are going to explore a world that actually makes healing mages kind of more impressive than an actual army that a king uses you don't and that's gonna be the big point moving forward because everyone's gonna think what can a healer really do well healing is already stated to be so rare in this world right like there's light magic i think um one of, one of our friends just got it right so basically when we got the powers it's like oh my god it's like one in ten thousand or some shit it's so rare and it's like healing is like holy fuck how did you get healing magic which is always also a kind of a mystery that we don't really know about because it's stated that only exceptional people are drawn into this world. So he technically got, you know, he, he leeched. He basically just kind of, you know, rode on the coattails of these two most popular students who are so accomplished at school. Usato is not really that. The king even feels bad. Yet he's the one with the healing magic, which is a mystery. Maybe that kind of implies that he is exceptional. Anyways, the whole healing thing, I think, is going to be even more profound in the future episodes. Whenever there's like a scene where multiple people are injured and Usatu has to like heal them because Rose specifically mentioned that like you need to be fast with this shit, right? So I'm just thinking of a scenario where a bunch of like, like let's say a squadron of people have already gone to fight the demon army and everybody's just been fucking decimated and there's bodies everywhere and it's like they're struggling. So Usatu gets in and just saves everybody so fast. He's so fast, right? Because of the cardio all he's doing and people are like, no fucking way. He just did all that. And then he ends up even one punching and being like, this guy's a fucking one man army. I hope something like that happens you get to say that really ever and i'm really excited to see how they're going to explore this power system because our boy is literally built different already give him a season or two's time demon lords beware I'm gonna and look at this dude oh we're built different already yet rose is literally picking the bear and usato i think that's one of the funniest panels or the scenes in the anime but please go give age brand the sub like this video if you did i think this anime if you're not watching you should definitely check it out i i doubt that anyone that's not watching this series is you know at this point of the video because they probably just skipped it anyways it's a great isekai check it out